All right, folks, now let's, let's use what we just learned about uh, total utility, marginal utility, uh, average utility, and marginal utility per price. We're going to use that to help people get the most utility out of whatever income that they have, whatever their budget constraint is. Okay. Now, in order to do this numerically, we need a couple of things which we, which we call, or I call, or uh, some people call, uh, the utility maximization rules. So this is utility maximization rule number one. I'm going to give you that in a minute. And utility maximization rule number two. And here's the idea is that if you follow these rules for utility maximization, then you or whomever you're calculating for will get the most utility that they can possibly get. Okay. All right. So let's go with utility maximization rule number one is uh, always choose the marginal unit of the product that gives you the most marginal utility per price. So, um, remember that the marginal unit is the next unit. And what we're going to do is an example here. We've got two products. And so let's say that you are at a party and you are trying to decide whether you are going to have uh, chips or pizza. Okay. So you walk up to the table and they've got chips over here and they have pizza over here. I'm sure there are other items. But remember, we're choosing between two items because even if you have eight options, in your mind, eventually, you're going to boil the whole thing down to the two best options, and then you're going to pick between those two items each time. Now, it does become more complicated in real life, but we're in a principles class. We're controlling variables so that we can get a basic understanding of what's happening up here microeconomically. Okay, so we're going to limit it to only two items, chips and pizza. And the first time that you approach the, the food table at the party, are you going to choose chips to eat first or pizza to eat first? And that is going to depend on how much utility you expect to get from the chips and how much utility you expect to get from the pizza. Now, in this case, we're buying something, so we're not at a party necessarily, okay? Um, so ultimately, what this utility maximization rule is saying is that you should choose the next thing that you should choose should be the product that gives you not the most marginal utility, but the most marginal utility per price. Another way of saying marginal utility per price is saying marginal utility per dollar. Okay, You want each one of your dollars to give you the most utility that you can possibly get. You know, if you have, if you get a paycheck and it's $473, you want to get the most utility that you can out of each one of those $473. You don't want to waste one of those dollars without getting the most satisfaction that you can get. I mean, why not? You worked hard for that $473. Why would you waste any of it? Get the most that you can get out of that $473. So utility maximization rule number two is always choose the combination of goods that equalizes the ratio of marginal utility per price for all goods. Which basically means that you want, when you're done deciding how much of product A and how much of product B you're going you're gonna to buy, you want the marginal utility per price for, for, you know, if you choose 
two of product A and one of product B, it's because the marginal utility per price of two over here is kind of equal to the marginal utility per price of one over here. You're trying to make the marginal utility per price equal on both products, okay? All right, so in order to be able to implement these two utility maximization rules, both of them refer to marginal utility per price, right? And therefore, we're gonna need the marginal utility per price for product A and the marginal utility per price for product B. In order to get the marginal utility per price, I need the marginal utility. So I need to create a marginal utility column. Now, as an aside, one of the things that I will do when I give you test and quiz questions is I'll give you this information, but I won't even give you these columns. I may not even give you space for these columns. I expect that you will know that you have to create those columns for yourself, okay? So I need a marginal utility column and I need a marginal utility per price column. And I need it for both of them. Marginal utility, marginal utility per price for both of these, okay? Now, the marginal utility of the first unit of product A is gonna give me 20 total utilities because we know that at a quantity of zero, my total utility would be zero. So the first unit that I consume is giving me 20 utility, so marginal utility here is 20. The second unit is causing my total utility to go up by 26, because 46 minus 20 is 26. Therefore, the marginal utility of the second unit is 26. The third unit of product A is causing my total utility to go up by 15, and therefore the marginal utility, 61 minus 46, that's 15. Marginal utility of the third unit is 15. Now, to get the marginal utility per price, I need to divide the marginal utility by the price. The price here you can see is $7. So I'll do here, 20 divided by seven is 2.86. 26 divided by 7 is 3.71, and 15 divided by 7 is 2.14. All right, so now I have my marginal utility per price, which I'm going to compare to the marginal utility per price over here in product B. First, I need the marginal utility. For product B, marginal utility of the first unit is 28 because one unit Consuming one unit brings my total utility up to 28. So the marginal utility of the first unit is 28. The second unit brings my total utility from 28 up to 52, and that means we've got 24, because 24 is 52 minus 28. Then the third unit brings my total utility from, 60, from 52 up to 69, and so that is a, a marginal utility of 17. Now I need to divide my marginal utilities by the price of nine, 28 divided by 9 gives me 3.11. 24 divided by 9 gives me 2.67. 17 divided by 9 gives me 1.89. Okay, so now let's say that you only have $10 and you go to the store and your choices, you've narrowed all your choices down to you are either gonna buy product A or product B. And because you have $10, you can't buy both of them. You can only buy either one unit of product A or one unit of product B. And you want to get the most for your money, the most per dollar, okay? And so here's what you need here's where utility maximization rule number 1 comes in. Always choose the marginal unit. So the next one you're going to choose and right now we're choosing the first one. Always choose the marginal unit of the product that gives you the most marginal unit per utility per price. Now, the next one that I would choose from product A is 1. The next one that I would choose from product B is one. So what I wanna do is I wanna compare the marginal utility per price of the first unit of product A to the marginal utility per price of the first unit of product B. 
Marginal utility per price of the first unit of product A is 2.86. The marginal utility per price of the first unit of product B is 3.11. And so I want to pick the one that gives me the most. 3.11 is greater than 2.86, and therefore I am going to choose one unit of product B. That's what I'm going to buy with my $10 to get the most utility out of my $10. Now, of course, there's going to be $1 left over, and that's just an inefficiency of the fact that the amount of money that I have doesn't match up with the prices. Okay, uh, I could use that dollar on something else, uh, some other product A and product B that are $1 or less. Okay, All right, now, let's now continue the example. Let's say that instead of having $10, I actually have $18. So I have $18, not $10. So I actually can afford with $18, I can afford to buy two things. I can either buy one of this and one of this, I can buy two of these, or I can buy two of these. Now, with when I'm making the first decision, we've already gone through the first decision, I know I'm going to buy one of product B because when I compare the first one here to the first one here, product B wins. But now that I'm going to move on to my second choice, I'm going to buy a second one. I'm now going to compare the marginal unit of A to the marginal unit of B. Well, over here, I haven't gotten any of A yet, so the marginal unit is still the first unit. But over here, the marginal unit of product B is the second one. And so what I need to do is I need to compare the marginal unit per price of the first one over here to the marginal unit per price of the second one over here. So I'm comparing 2.86 to 2.67, and I want the most utility per dollar. Therefore, I'm going to pick this one right here. This is larger than this, and therefore, I'm going to pick the first unit of product A. And so with my $18, I am going to buy one unit of product A and one unit of product B. Okay? All right. Well, let's say that instead of having $18, let's say that I have, uh, I don't know, let's say that I have $25, okay, or somewhere around there. So that now I actually, after I, after I get the first one of, of B and the first one of A, I now have $9 left over. I, now, I can now choose one more unit. Okay, well, if I'm choosing one more unit, what I'm now going to do is I've already gotten the first one of A and the first one of B, so now I need to compare the marginal unit of A. The marginal unit over here is now the second unit. The marginal unit over here is also the second unit, so I need to compare their marginal utility per price on both. So over here, I'm, I'm going to get 3.71 per dollar. Over here, I'm going to get 2.67 per dollar. Well, I'd rather have the 3.71 per dollar than the 2.67 per dollar. So with my money, I am going to buy a second unit of product A. And so if I have, let's say, 25 or 26 dollars, the best thing that I can do with that money based on this information is buy two units of product A and one unit of product B. And if we were to continue this exercise, if we had more money, now we're going to compare the third unit of A to the second unit of B. And you can see we're comparing 2.14 to 2.67 over here. And therefore, we would choose the second unit of product B. I'm going to do it in a different color as if we're continuing. The second unit of product B. Then lastly, let's say we were comparing the third unit of product A with the third unit of product B, we got 2.14 compared to 1.89. Obviously, we would choose the third unit of product uh, A. Okay, And now let me explain to you what this utility maximization rule number two means. It says, always choose the combination of goods that equalizes the ratio of marginal utility per price for all goods. Well, in this case, all goods means two goods, product A and product B. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to equalize the marginal utility per price. So let's say that we do buy five goods. We'll get three units of A, 
two units of B. Now watch this. What we're going to do is we are going to compare. This is what we're equalizing. 2.14 here with 2.67. And I know that those numbers aren't equal, but they're close. They're very close to equal. And that's basically where you want to be, is that the last unit of each product that you, de that you decided to choose, that their marginal utility per price is very close to each other. And now we have, uh, we have used utility maximization rule number one to step by step choose and then we've used utility maximization rule number two to verify that we have picked a good combination, three of product A and two of product B. And now, after this, now that we've made our decision, we can now answer a few questions. One of the questions that you might be asked is, what is the maximum utility this person can achieve? So let's say that on a quiz, I give you this information, and then I say, what is the maximum utility this person can achieve? And what you would do to, to find that answer is, you would go to the third. So here, we're getting three of unit A. So go to the third unit and go to total utility. This person is going to get 61 utility out of the three units of product A that they buy. And then go over to the other product, product B. What's the maximum they're buying? They're buying two. So go to total utility on two. They're going to get 52 utility from product B. Add these two numbers together, 61 plus 52 is 113. So this person is going to get 113 utility from uh, the three, three units of product A and the two units of product B. That is the most utility that they can achieve. If you try and manipulate this, if you take one of these away, if you take this third unit away and put this 30, third unit on, okay, then, well, technically speaking, they will get more, but not per price because this one is cheaper. It could be that their budget won't allow them to buy the third unit of product B uh, because they didn't have enough money, okay? All right, so in this case, the maximum utility that this person can achieve is 113. The next question that you may be asked is, um, how much of each product should this person consume? And of course, for A, they should consume three. And how much of product B should they consume? And the answer would be two. And then you might also be asked, for example, what is the first thing that they should buy? And if, you, if you're being asked what is the first unit that they should buy in this procedure, the very first one that we selected was this one. Then if, if you're asked what is the second thing that they should select, do you remember that this was the second one that we selected? And then this one was the third one we selected, this one was the fourth one we selected, and this one was the fifth one we selected. And that's pretty much everything that you will be asked to do in showing your knowledge of, of, of numerical utility maximization. Okay? What I'd like to do now is I'd like to do a couple more examples uh, so, that, so that this can sort of get beat into your brain.